Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Dorina Grosso and I've been working as a professor at Conestoga College for over two years. I've been working in the education industry for 10 years, either teaching in classes, asynchronously e-learning or synchronously. I believe that education and technologies can no longer be separated since technology has made large progress, providing students with the flexibility to learn from anywhere in the world. Study in students' learning performance in a hybrid learning environment presentation will describe the approach used in the course that I teach at Conestoga College within the School of Workforce Development and Continuing Education through Online Learning. This course is part of the Quality Assurance and Manufacturing Management Program delivered to international students who attend classes synchronously and asynchronously. Students in this program have different backgrounds from chemistry, engineering, biotechnology, mechanical, electrical, and they all have the same goal, acquire the necessary knowledge from our courses to be prepared to enter the Canadian workforce. My passion is education and use of technologies to promote learning and education that is fl flexible for each student. Learning the courses while using different technologies has not been easy for many international students. However, the results of this study will show that the environment created at Conestoga College in this program has helped many students to complete it without great challenges. One of the outcomes when teaching a hybrid course is that one can achieve deeper learning through an experiential learning approach. The courses were available to students in two forms, as asynchronous and synchronous. Although the synchronous course slides can be delivered face-to-face -face under normal conditions, COVID-19 made it impossible for students and professors to meet in person. This report used data from synchronous and asynchronous classes to determine whether the students have accomplished deep learning. The educational technological advancements made it possible to adapt both asynchronous and synchronous courses to machine learning interpretation. As course assessments need to match the depth and student engagement while learning, KG Bragg in 2009, by using the machine learning predictive and classification modeling, the report will present the effectiveness of the hybrid learning approach. This hybrid approach helps the students to become co-creators within the multidimensional environment. Each student could self-develop the knowledge to be better prepared and acquire the skills that each would need to become successful in their professional career. As we know, the term hybrid learning is a way of combining traditional classroom experiences, experiential learning objectives, and digital course delivery that emphasizes the use of the best option for each learner as well as its objective. Hybrid learning model refers to the blending and mixing of the learning environments, face-to-face -face classroom instruction, and online environment during 2006. Ibrahim defined face-to-face -face learning as where the students and instructor meet and communicate with each other in one place or physically without using any online technology, Ibrahim 2011. In addition, Moore and Kersley defined distance learning as planned learning that normally occur in a different place from teaching requiring special course design and instruction techniques, communication through various technologies, special organizational and administrative arrangements. However, hybrid learning environment gives students the privilege to understand and to explore the real-world issues through authentic learning experiences facilitated in an online learning environment, at least 2001. Hybrid learning or blended learning combines online with face-to-face -face learning. The goal of hybrid learning is to provide the more efficient and effective instruction experience by combining delivery modalities, Kumar 2012. Hybrid learning through the incorporation of information and communication has modified the structure of education with the application of intelligent teaching systems and utilization of intelligent agents, for example, collaborative teaching agents, web interface agents, and so on, capable to recognizing the difficulties and variances of learners and the process of learning to 250, and these are the factors, so Tecucci, Anastasides, and Ritalis. 
they all pointed out that in hybrid learning, there are changing roles between the student and the teacher. The teacher evolves into coordinator of knowledge source capable of handling and processing the pace of learning, and the student attendance and examination requirements are replaced by active participation in the learning processes, development of individualized learning area, and multiple or two-way basis of evaluation, as well as the time frame of training process that changes into lifelong learning endeavor. The course was developed by using the David Kolb framework for experiential learning with the main idea during the online courses based on Ken Bain, who explained how this new relationship assumes that knowledge is constructed and not received. By the time we reach college, we have thousands of mental models or schemas that we use trying to understand the lectures we hear or the texts we read. Bain, 2004. When students encounter the requirement of solving a problem or resolving a dilemma, especially when doing so, it pushes students beyond common solutions and ideas, learning is enhanced. David Kolb model has four areas, concrete experience, reflective observation of the new experience, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. Students access the before class course slides where they gain basic knowledge about what they will learn during the in-class sessions. At the beginning of each class session in synchronous mode, they are engaged by answering questions or complete short exercises that were developed to ensure the doing having experience step in the David Cobb model. Part of reflective observation occurs at the beginning of the class as well as at the end of the class. The group one-to-one -one and personal reflection that is part of an online course helps construct these new mental models. These new mental models require assignments that give students time to reflect on what they have learned. This reflection begins the internalization of new values and ideas. These reflective assignments also focus student attention on what they know, not the assignment grade. During the synchronous classes, while introducing the new concepts, there are videos and questions that students will answer. Reflection is done during the in-class session when students, either in groups or individually, have to answer questions from the material that was presented. All the recorded lessons are then available to students such that each can learn or ask questions if there were concepts not well understood during the online classes. The courses have been separated into three modules as complete before class, in-class material, and complete after your class. Students have to read the course slides available in the complete before class and be prepared to engage online with the professor and each other. Because of the collaborative online approach, each can learn from the other and construct the knowledge. The goal is to ensure that each student feels included in the topic discussions at the beginning of the class. In this presentation, data was collected based on the student's effort made to further develop their skills. At an individual level of authenticity, that is relevant to their future career opportunities. Students are co-constructing the knowledge by accessing the asynchronous course material, while in reviews at the beginning of the synchronous lesson, they present their understanding and collaborate by engaging in discussions. The intent of synchronous learning is to build on prior knowledge that would ensure a deeper understanding. Therefore, asynchronous learning has only a limited amount of new information that is reviewed at the beginning of the synchronous class. At the end of each class, students provide their reflections that are summarized and compared with the results obtained in the two summative exams. Students had four quizzes during this semester, three assignments and two summative exams. The student study did not consider the results from quizzes and assignments. Students who access consistently the asynchronous lessons, synchronous lessons, and responded through reflections, have a higher degree of independent judgment, are emotionally collected as they hypothesize, increase their ability to interpret data and reflect on the course material. Also, students who had better results were engaged for longer periods with the course material. The results of this study were completed by using the machine learning software RapidMiner, 
At the beginning of each semester, each student completed a questionnaire about their previous learning and working experience in the topic that they were going to learn. The main interest was either prior automotive industry or statistical knowledge. The first course offered level 1 knowledge in the automotive industry, while the second provided level 2 knowledge in statistics. About 10% of students had knowledge either in the automotive industry or the statistics before. Between the midterm exam and final exam, there was not a significant difference as the average was 67% and 60% for a population that encompassed 117 students. The results from this questionnaire were, were added to build a machine learning model. Study design and data collected. The data was collected weekly based on and organized as follows. WVK1B is week one before class. WVK1I is week one in class. And WVK1A is week one after class. In-class sessions were online over three hours and recorded as minutes. The numbers used for before and after class was either a zero or one, and zero is if the student did not access the course slides, while one is if the student accessed them. Software, as mentioned, is rapid minor, and the benefits, uh, data visualization and opportunities to understand from historical data and make changes to course delivery method if required. There are several steps taken to collect, prepare, and then upload the data in the Rapid Miner software. Because the software in machine learning requires a lot of data, the results of these studies that have less than 100 numbers will not be accurate. There are an analysis performed in step 4 to select the best model that would fit the data. The benefit is that if the studies are performed regularly, the professor can make changes during the semester to ensure that all students will be successfully completing this course and programs. In the following slides, you will see two models that were used, classification and regression, but both are part of the predictive analytics. A brief description of the two models that I used just to show the differences for this application. Predictive modeling has the challenge to, pre to develop a model using the historical data to make a prediction on new data where we do not have to, uh, the answer. Uh, in all models, I use the auto model, which implies that the software made its own decisions based on the data that was available. These are the processes that the machine learning software performs. There are six steps that are performed automatically. In the classification predictive modeling, I selected two classes after columns input. As an output, I selected the final grade column, the split of the two classes is at 61% for final grade. The class with the highest interest selected is range 2 since we would want to have students who score higher in the final exam. In the classification error table, we have a list of different models that we can select. It shows the percentage of the classification error and from this table between deep learning and decision tree, I selected the decision tree because the standard deviation was lower. Both models had the same number for classification error at 30.1% and there were 205 models generated from the data. So those were lots of models. On the bottom, there are two models. First graph is the decision tree model and shows that week three in class is the root tree. There are two splits and the first ends as range two. When students participated for more than 176 minutes in class during the week three. The right highlighted blue shows that students who had less than 176 minutes spent during that week in class had to have more than 0.5 for the week 3 attendance before class to reach a range 2. If students spend more time during week 8 in class, they will reach to range 2 with over 178 minutes. This is a very simple tree, therefore it cannot be used as a model. This classification predictive model is not appropriate to be used for this example. The production model is what is used to calculate the performance values on the label testing data sets, and it shows that the model is consistent with the predictions table and the confusion matrix. 
However, this model is not using all the labeled data since it needs some of the labeled data for model validation. Its main purpose is to estimate how well the model will work in production. The production model uses exactly the same pre-processing feature sets optimized parameters, but is using all labeled data for training. This is the model you should use in production and it makes use of all the available information. When selecting the regression predictive model, there were 100 trees that were grown. On the right side top, the chart shows that the random forest model has the lowest value for errors. When selecting the tree, we need to look at its complexity, a large number of branches and so on. In the picture below, the first tree was selected for demonstration purposes. The area that is highlighted in blue provides details regarding those who obtain grade six, between 76.6, 74, and 78. The main root is week 5 after the class asynchronous and then is split in different values depending on week 11 before class and week 4 in class. In the regression predictive model, for each split, only a random subset of attributes is available. The software has another option that provides a simulator. We see that the midterm was a contributor to the final exam, but when selecting between the students who had experience prior to taking this course versus those who didn't, the simulator shows that those without previous knowledge will perform better than those with knowledge. For each of the week, there are sliders that could have either a positive, negative, or no impact on the final exam. The individualized assessment of the predictive model is easy to interpret as the values are colored in green, red, or light color as pink and light green. Red contradicts the predictive model, green agrees with the predictive model, light colors don't have a high correlation with the predictive model. Students with 40 and 42% final grade would have had higher grade if they performed better during the week 2 in class, as well as week 6 in class and after class. The fact that they both came to class on the week 1 but did, did not increase their final grade. As we can see, the students from row 40 did not access the course during the second part of the semester. The model can be deployed in a product environment and is expanded. And as we can see, that previous knowledge and midterm were also added to 3.1 that was used before, showing the students can reach up to a higher grade in the final exam by spending more time to learn in week 6 in class. This example has almost the same result since the main split was week 5 after the class. Midterm exam was relevant in this model 3.1. Some conclusions that can be drawn from this study are that by using predictive analytics machine learning, we can potentially reduce the student stress levels based on models and develop a more customized approach to reach to an individual level. These predictive models have proven that prior knowledge and past experiences are overrated, and it is rather the individual learning pattern that leads to results. There is no current model deployed, although it would be beneficial to set up a study across certain programs to monitor and perform predictive analytics. Hybrid education model presents itself the benefits of self-learning and acquiring knowledge, therefore, to design and merge in these courses the knowledge and technologies will promote a positive environment for learning. I would like to thank you for your participation. Thank you.